Hi everyone, how's it going? It's Chloe, I'm back. I'm here to do my Q&A today. It's been long awaited, I'm so sorry for the wait. But I figured we should just go ahead and jump right into it. Today, I did my makeup and my hair for the first time and I feel like a queen. So, first question, let me just preface all of this by saying I have four, I have five categories of questions. I got a ton of questions streaming in from you guys, so thank you to everyone that sent them in. But I wanted to narrow them down into these categories. I have self-love, food and fitness, beauty and career, and then an etc. category, which are just random questions. So let's just get started with the first question from Emily Duncan. She said, my question is how you so fly? And the answer to that is, girl, I'm just following your lead. Okay, now my first category is the self-love category, which I got a lot of questions in, especially regarding, you know, confidence and things like that. So the first question is from Jay's Fitness who said, what would you say to those that struggle with issues like self-acceptance, bad relationship with food, etc.? So, first of all, self-acceptance does not happen overnight. It's not easy and it's not something that you can just one day decide that you have it. It's something that you have to consciously work on every day. So, I think a lot of people that struggle with that, we are always putting ourselves down, we're always beating ourselves up where when we make a mistake, or if you eat a bad meal, you really beat yourself up, but it seems like you don't really have the self-control beforehand, so you eat it, and then afterwards you just feel so guilty. So the answer to that for me is that I stopped, excuse me, I stopped looking at food as good or bad. And I learned this from Hannah Bauer, who um, I met at the Arnold, and she's just a wonderful human being. We really relate. and. I kind of learned to look at the idea of flexible dieting and look at food as it's not good or bad, but everything in moderation, right? So if there's a certain food that you love, that's fine. You know, you can eat it. It's not off limits. I think when you start to limit yourself, you start to really crave the things that you just can't have. You want it because you can't have it. So I think as far as my relationship with food, I stopped looking at it as something I should be guilty for or something I have to eat. I started just eating the things that I like and just looking for ways to nourish my body more than just eating for fun. Um, and as far as self-acceptance, it's just something that you have to decide like, yes, I have goals and you should never stop working towards them. Nobody's perfect, everyone can improve, right? But you, as you are today, you are perfect. You can get better, but you deserve to love yourself. You deserve to be loved by others. And you have to treat yourself with respect. You have to treat yourself with that love before you can expect to get it elsewhere. So you have to find that happiness and that self-assurance within your own self before you can seek it elsewhere, especially through other people, through food, drugs, alcohol. They're all just ways to fill a void. Um, so I just say work on every day, consciously make an effort to really know yourself and to love yourself. Blah, blah, all this hay, making my work up a sweat. Okay, what's next? Okay, so I got a question from G-Shock1805 who said basically that they're so scared to wear shorts. Why is it so hard and how did you learn to embrace it? So. I stopped wearing shorts when I was about 12. I grew up really quickly. I had this growth spurt where I just got really curvy all at once, seemed like overnight. I was in seventh grade. Um, and suddenly I was like, had a big chest and big hips. Like my hip bones would stick out because they just grew so quickly. And my thighs got really thick really quickly. And I used to always be made fun of for my thighs. Like they would call me like thunder thighs, things like that. Looking back, it's funny. I'm like, Hell yeah, but at the time, you know, as a kid, things, you take them to heart and they hurt you. So I stopped wearing shorts when I was 12 because I had stretch marks on my legs and I was super embarrassed. So it has been almost 10 years since I've willingly worn shorts. 
And think about all the things that that stops you from doing. I mean, hiking in Arizona where it's so hot. I couldn't, I didn't want to go hiking. I didn't want to go zip lining on vacation. I didn't want to do anything that it required wearing shorts. And that's really sad, but you, what I figured now, now that I'm working on myself is that you can't let your insecurities stop you from living your life. Like that is so sad and insane when I look back, but at the time it's all that I knew. And so I worked on it. I'll admit it was not easy at first to wear shorts. One day it was super hot here in Indiana. First of all, it's so humid. Even right now, it's so humid. Like I'm like dewy, but it's so hot here in Indiana and I had to walk to class um, at the very end of this school year and it was so hot. And one day I was like, you know what? It is too hot for leggings. I'm just gonna wear shorts and I don't care. I was so pale and I was like, who cares? Honestly, who's gonna be looking at me? Who cares? I put them on, I walked out of the house, and I wasn't comfortable. It was uncomfortable. It's something I haven't done in 10 years. Of course, it was uncomfortable. And I'm not gonna lie and say that it was. I went to class. I walked all the way to class. Felt really weird. Sat through class. I felt like everyone was looking at me. And on my way home, I realized no one's looking at you. Unless they're looking at you because you're so flat. No one cares, no one sees you in that way. Like we are all our biggest critics and you just have to come to a day where you decide, I'm gonna wear what I want to wear. I'm gonna do what I want to do because I want to. And if you try to please everyone in this life, first of all, it's impossible. Secondly, you're not gonna find your own happiness if you're trying to make everyone else happy. So do what you wanna do, wear what you want to wear. And after that, I've been wearing shorts all the time is it a pretty sight? Who cares? Not me. I'm much more comfortable now wearing shorts and you get to do a lot of activities that you can't do in a skirt or in leggings in shorts. So if you're struggling with wearing shorts, first of all, they're not a very complimentary cut. So try to find shorts that complement your body the best way that they can. Secondly, just start. It's not going to be comfortable at first, especially if you haven't done it in a really long time or if your body has changed and you haven't worn shorts recently. It's not going to be comfortable at first, but it takes practice. Practice makes perfect, and you will come to a time where you're totally comfortable wearing what you want to wear. So my advice is just to do it. This is a good one. This is from Carly Marissa GPT. She says, even after losing weight, I still get called a thick chick, which I'm happy about. I was wondering, do you get many people calling you plus size or any negativity because you are not the Barbie doll type? Do you think it's hard in the industry to get people to understand that curves are beautiful and perfectly okay? So luckily, I think that there is this revolution that's happening right now and has been happening for a little while that is all about self-love. And self-love is the greatest revolution because it helps us all to realize that skinny is great, curvy is great, plus size is great, whatever you may be, you just have to own it. If you have confidence, and you understand yourself, this is who I am, I'm going to make the best of it, you are beautiful. And that's kind of this movement that is going on right now in our culture, and I am so here for it, okay? Because we all deserve that, we all should feel beautiful. We are all beautiful in our own skin. Yes, I get called thick, I get called curvy, I get called plus size, and if I were to model, which I've had like, some interest, I would, see I'm, I'm not a typical model and I'm not a plus size model because of my pant and dress size isn't technically big enough to be plus size, but I'm not small enough to be a standard model. So um, it's kind of a hard position for me, but currently I'm not considered plus size, but people do say that I'm thick. I literally have people, guys obviously, Tell me to my face. Girl, you are thicker than a snicker. To my face. That was their line. And they thought I would be like, what? I don't know. Which, in my head I was, but in person I just laughed. And I'm like, don't ever talk to me. You know, like, who are you? Anyways, yes, it is hard in this industry. Definitely, I noticed 
Um, really, I was really nervous going to the Arnold, which is the Fit Expo in Ohio, and I really thought that I would feel out of place because I am curvier, I'm thicker, I don't have a six pack, I don't have like a perfectly toned body. But what I found when I went there is that people didn't look at me differently, they didn't treat me differently. I think in this industry, people overthink it. So of course, there's always going to be people that don't appreciate a thicker, curvier body. There's this saying that's like, you could be the greatest, juiciest peach in the world, but you'll still meet people who don't like peaches. And that's kind of my, my mentality is like, I can be the greatest version of myself and there's still going to be people that don't appreciate that and that's fine. You just, you shouldn't care. Whatever industry you're in, if you're happy and you're being yourself and you're being your best self and you know that you're giving it your all, who cares what anyone else around you is thinking? Because you should be proud of yourself, you should be happy with yourself and that is perfectly okay. It's great. So yes, my answer to that question is I understand being called thick and it does not, in my head, it doesn't have a negative connotation thanks to society's changing my mindset. I think it's much more inclusive. It's like being thick is good now. And on the other hand, if people who aren't thick and who aren't curvy, they can start to feel self-conscious because they don't have a huge butt and a hourglass figure and that's my message to everyone not just the curvy girls I think everyone should feel comfortable in the skin that they're in and their body that they're in because most likely it comes from your genetics and it's very unique to you because your parents your grandparents they came together to form these combinations of genes that found you to be where you are and who you are today you look like you because of all the chemistry that has come before you and all of the DNA and now the odds of you living is so, so small that you exist and you look like you do, it's a miracle. It's a blessing. You should only work to enhance that and be comfortable in that. You should never try to change you. And the final one in this section is from Riley Schultz, who said, what are your tips on staying confident? This just kind of goes with the theme of it all, that you need to be comfortable where you are today. You need to make the decision that you are happy and you are comfortable in the skin you're in. No matter if you want to go on this journey of losing weight and you're working towards that, that's great, but life cannot begin at that deadline. Life cannot begin when you lose 20 pounds. It cannot begin when you can fit into a size four again. Life has to begin now. You have to appreciate yourself now where you are and continue the journey because before you know it, you're gonna blink and your life is gonna be passed you by and you won't even know where it went because you'll be so worried about fitting into a certain dress or making some guy like you, whatever it is, that you won't even see it, life will pass you by and you'll miss it. So to be confident, you just have to know that you are an individual, you aren't unique, and that's what makes you so great. It's not the way you look. It's not even your personality. It's the fact that you are an individual. There's no one like you on this planet, no one. You might have a twin sister, but you are still an individual and no one can take that from you. And when I'm walking down the street and I feel good about myself, no one, I'm unstoppable because I'm confident in myself and that is the most beautiful thing that any individual, but especially a woman, can have. Because society tells you to be something else. Society is always telling you, don't be comfortable with yourself. Be this person, look like her, have her body, but her face and her hair and her lips. And the greatest superpower you can have is confidence. If you're confident, you'll be successful in your career. You'll be successful in dating, in your relationships, your friendships, because you are comfortable with yourself, you are literally unstoppable. You can do 
anything you set your mind to. So you have to remember that confidence is the root of happiness and success. And you have to consciously make your mind up every single day to believe in yourself, to know who you are, what are your strengths and your weaknesses, and always take steps forward in whatever way that you can every day. And that's how I stay confident because I know who I am and that's where it stems from. And I'm proud of who I am. And I've let go of my bitterness towards my past, towards my mistakes, towards my embarrassing moments, towards my negative relationships, all of my negative feelings towards my past. I've finally been able to let them go, accept them, and appreciating them those times for who it has made me today. So confidence stems from knowing who you are, knowing where you've came from, and where you want to go. And don't forget that, ever. And my last tip on staying confident. I wanna tell you a story about my little brother, Max, who you may have met in a prior video. Max used to go to school every day wearing a Superman or etc. superhero costume. My dad used to walk him into school and the first time that he did this, he was wearing a Superman costume, had built-in muscles. He was feeling himself. He's walking into school, walking past the schoolyard and he's like, Dad, I think everyone's looking at me. And my dad's like trying to comfort him. Well, why do you think that? You know, why do you think that, son? He goes, because I look good. <laughs> and that is my mantra of life in this stage I'm at right now. If everyone's staring at me, I just tell myself, it's because I look good. I could be wearing sweatpants, hair tied, chilling with no makeup on. And I'm like, you can stare at me. You're welcome. I just blessed your life because I look good. And if you think that way, if you give yourself that positive mentality, you don't feel self-conscious anymore, no matter what you're wearing. So think of that. Next time you're walking around, you feel like people are staring at you. Just remember that. So now we're on to the beauty section of the Q&A. This question is asked probably every day, anytime that I post something on my Instagram story or on my Instagram page, people ask me, what lipstick are you wearing? They always want to know. And it's something that I literally wear every single day. Um, so I do, shoot, I can't even remember what it is. So I love the lip company Bite. They use all organic products. They, um, are really, really great with color. So I use a lip liner by them. And I'll have to go look what it is, but I will, I will write it out here what the color is. It's just a number, um, and I'll put that right here. And I use the lip liner, okay? And then I put over that a lipstick by MAC, and I'll put the name here. I believe it's called Mare. Or I put over it a uh, liquid lip by Urban Decay. I'll put that here. I think it's 1993 is the name of it. And with the liquid lip, I just use it more as a lip stain. So I just tap it into my lip and make it stain. And then my secret weapon to make it last literally all day long and it looks really matte and pretty and more natural, I think, is I take a banana powder. I specifically use Sephora, but I know there's a lot better ones out there. That one's just cheap and I don't use it really for much else. So I got the cheaper version. So it's a banana powder and I use just a little bit. I put it on my finger and it's so weird, but I blow out and I tap it on my lips like all over and then I kind of brush it off like this. And it sounds dumb, but it's, it looks really nice. It gives you that like really nice mauve color and it sets your lips so they literally last forever and they're matte and that's just my secret weapon. So now you know. Um, my current slash favorite skincare item, so I've been using Franklin and Whitman 
for a very long time now. They, they've been sending me things and I've been trying them out, testing them for them. Um, they have all kinds of like different combinations and, and things like that, but I love them because they're an all organic, all natural company and they are cruelty free, which is huge for me. I'm a huge animal lover. They also donate 5% of all of their profits to an animal organization. So like a dog shelter. And if you guys know, I spend a lot of my volunteer time in animal shelters. And so that's just kind of like the triple threat all in one package for me to be working with a skincare company like that. And what I use from them is their cleansing oil, which is new. I use their face masks all the time. I use their face oil and their body oil. My favorite, all-time favorite thing from them is the botanical steam. Um, I can do a whole video on all the things I use. If you guys would like, just let me know in the comments below. But I just signed up to be an affiliate with them. So if you guys want 20% off and to support me as an advocate, um, the code is just Chloe. I'll link them below and have the code. But if you're looking for skincare, theirs is awesome. And I mean, my skin looks better than it's looked maybe ever, but for a really long time. So I love their, and the fact that it's all natural, um, my skin really responds to that really, really well. Will you start doing more stage makeup? Yes, this is from Jillian Stacy. Yes, I definitely will. I really did like my first couple clients recently. Um, and I, I was nervous about it because I didn't want to mess anyone's up because I know it's a big event, but I realized it's something that I'm naturally pretty good at. I've had a lot of practice doing makeup and I love, love doing kind of extreme looks like stage makeup. And I've done my sisters for so long that when I tr finally tried it out, I realized that it looked awesome and I love it and they really loved it. So I will definitely start doing stage makeup. If you ever need me to do a show, I'll do anything that's within like two hours of where I live. Um, I think so if you're interested just contact me on Instagram is the best way and we can definitely set something up um, tips for growing your hair faster mine does not grow from Lexi Davenport so tips on hair and growth hearing grow with <sighs> tips on hair grow so for me I've been wearing extensions for literally almost eight years it sounds insane. My hair just does not ever grow as thick and nice as I want it to naturally. Also, my hair has been very damaged because I've gone from black to platinum blonde and back and forth. I'm a woman of extremes, what can I say? Now I have kept my hair dark for a couple years now. Um, I made the mistake of going back to blonde my junior year of college. Who knows, I got issues. But um, my biggest advice if you do want to grow your hair faster is for one, don't highlight it, don't lighten it at all. If you can, if you like the way it looks on you, I would only dye it darker, deposit color. If you have natural hair color, I would keep it. I wouldn't mess with it at all. But if you're only dyeing your hair darker, you're only depositing color and it's not very damaging. Whereas when you're lightening, of course, any lightening uses bleach and it's literally changing the chemical makeup of your hair and it makes it weaker. So if you want to grow your hair out, I would recommend one, don't dye it and if you are going to, just dye it darker. And two, embrace your natural texture, whatever it may be, whether it's straight, wavy, curly, find a way to embrace it and enhance it. Try out different methods, different techniques um, so you can do different styles and you can use different products to make your hair look different. Brush it at different times and just find a way, especially in the summertime, to work with your natural hair texture because for me, um, that has been a huge difference in my hair. Okay, Whew. sweating. And also, Ashley McCordova said, how do you get your hair so long and shiny? To continue on with my rant about hair, um, just treat it really nicely. Only wash it every few days if you can. If you have naturally pretty greasy hair, you kind of have to train it to be less oily by washing it less. You can use dry shampoo um, if you absolutely need to, but I kind of have veered away from that because I know it is very drying for your hair. And when you brush it out, it does get to your ends. And having dry hair is the 
worst thing you can do if you want to grow it out and you want it to be healthy. I always, always use something that is hydrating. My shampoo and conditioner is always hydrating. And then on top of that, I do a weekly mask on my hair. Um, I have all different kinds, but I think it's really important to do a weekly repairing slash hydration mask and then use a sulfate free shampoo and conditioner that's going to hydrate your hair and use as little heat on it as possible. That's kind of where I'm going. So, um, the next category is going to be